Hello everyone and welcome back to the garage. It's been so long since I filmed the last video, life just got a bit too busy, but here we are again working on an R1150 Jess with an oil leak. So let's get started. So we're down here on the left side of the bike and you can see the sole side and even the bash plate is full of oil. So I've already removed the fuel tank, the seats and I've even lowered the, the crash bars to make it easier. Don't think I needed to film that. And quick tip, if you're working on your bike, either on the floor or on the table, just add the ratchet strap between the front wheel and the center stand. That way you can't really knock it off and drop the bike. Anyway, back to the problem. Oil leak, it all seems to be coming from the bottom of the cylinder. It's oil all the way to the top. And although there's a lot more down here, could be a separate leak, but I've seen this bike before, and last time this was all pretty clean, it was all up here. So, n so unless another oil leak sprung from somewhere, probably all coming from there so that's what we're gonna fix today now you could just use the back wheel to turn the engine over but on this occasion I'm just gonna take this cover off and use the pulley bolt that's underneath and while I'm at it I'm also gonna check the belt tension before I put the cover back on so this is the offending cylinder and I'm just gonna pop this plastic cover off I'm using a special tool to pop the spark plug lead out but you don't really need it Taking the spark plug out, that makes the engine easier to turn over. Take the spark plug out on the other cylinder as well. Now this is slightly scary, those exhaust nuts look pretty corroded, but I soaked them in WD-40 for a couple of days, and let's see what happens. First one comes loose without too much trouble. And the second one is loose as well, and off camera I took them off the other cylinder as well, without any trouble. And also loosen the exhaust clamps on both sides. A bit of pressure and a few gentle taps, and it slowly comes out. And there we go, exhaust is off. Now I'm removing the plastic crash guard. And the rocker cover. There we go, we can see the rockers inside. Now I'm going to pop out the plug from the inspection window in the crankcase, and I'm going to turn the engine over till I get to the OT mark, which is top that center. And now I'm just checking if the rockers are loose, and making sure I'm on top that center on the compression stroke on the left hand cylinder. Now you can buy flywheel locking tools for these bikes, but here's one I made myself from a head bolt I removed from a Rover K-Series engine. And there's the hole it needs to go in. Just double checking the flywheel is locked. And now before I can take off the head, I also need to remove the throttle body. So I'm just loosening all three clamps. Now I'm just going to grab the intake pipe and just push it into the airbox. And the throttle body just pops out, so I'll leave it there attached. Now I'm just going to remove this access cover for the camshaft sprocket. So we've got the rocker covers off, spark plugs out, um, engine in the top dead center on the compression stroke on this cylinder. We can check that by moving the rockers, which they do. We've got our cam lock in place. We're nearly there to take off the cylinder head. But what I feel I should mention here is there's a bit of risk involved. So next thing is to remove this bolt in here, which holds the, the camshaft sprocket in place. And if we're not careful with that, we can break break the chain guides. So that'll obviously be a pain. We don't want to do that. There's a big temptation to just put an impact on that. Don't do it. That'll most likely shatter the chain guides. The next thing is to remove the remove the chain tensioner. That'll reduce the risk. So they're slightly different from side to side. On the other side, it's underneath. On the side, it's right there on top. Bit of an awkward place to put it. Um, so yeah, let's get this out. And interestingly, this is already a bit loose. Maybe that accounts for part of the leak, at least. 
And there it is, slowly coming out in two parts. Now you could remove the telelever arm to give yourself more space, but I didn't see it being necessary. And fishing out the bottom part of the tensioner with a little magnet. And there we go, tensioner is out. I can actually move the sprocket a bit by hand now, which means the chain is loose. And hopefully that reduces the risk of the guide snapping enough and we can carry on. If it's really tight, I'm going to stop and we might have to make a special tool to hold the sprocket in place. But uh, let's put a ratchet on it and see what happens. Take the tension out. Yeah, looks like this one might be a pain. It's actually really tight. And look at that, I've got it loose. And my chain guide seemed to be intact, so that's a major relief, because if they break, that's a huge pain. But they're intact, it all seems to be good. I was at the point of giving up on this and trying something else, trying to make a special tool for it. But here we go, got it loose now, so let's carry on. I'm just gonna undo this bolt, not completely, just a bit. I'm going to pry the sprocket away. I'm just trying to create some space so I can put a zip tie onto it and the chain. Good, that's off. So we're ready to take the head off. And I'm gonna start by removing the small bolts first. That's the safe thing to do. And now I can go ahead and loosen the cylinder head nuts. Just a bit at a time and do it in stages to make sure it's coming off evenly. And I can take off the nuts in the washers. And here's a mistake I've done. I forgot there's another bolt in there. I should have loosened that off first. Now it's going to be really tight. And there it is. That's out as well. And the head should just come off now. And there it is on the bench. Pretty straightforward so far. Now onto the cylinder. There's a support bolt for the chain guide down here. And a few more bolts inside. They actually use silicone to seal the cylinder onto the crankcase. So it needs a few taps and a bit of prying to loosen it off. I can slide the head gasket out of the way. And here comes the cylinder. Be careful though, once you get to the bottom of the piston, slide something under it, so when you take the cylinder completely off, the piston isn't just going to fall and get damaged on the studs. There's my old t-shirt that's been promoted to garage use. And now we can see the piston. I can take the centering sleeves off. Might need a few taps to pop it out. And the cylinder is off. And there's the bar. Not looking too bad after all those miles. Well, great news, I've got the left cylinder off the bike and I managed to do that without breaking anything, so that's always a bonus. Now it's time for the fun part, cleaning everything, which I won't bore you with. I'm just gonna get everything clean, ready to apply the new sealant and I'll see you back then. So I'm gonna start with getting the piston ready. I haven't touched the rings, they're in the same position. I'm just gonna put the ring compressor in place so that's ready to go. A bit of oil everywhere to make sure it slides in easier and prevents any damage.
and there's the ring compressor all in place. Right, now it's time to apply some sealant on the bottom of the cylinder. A bit of oil in the bore so the piston slides in easier. I'm probably putting too much, but it's fine as long as it doesn't touch the sealant. And here it is, starting to put things back together. Line everything up and make sure it starts straight and the piston should just slide in and push the ring compressor out of the way. Now the rings are all in the bore so I can remove the ring compressor and push it in the rest of the way. There we go, looking pretty good so far. Now just putting these bolts in and torquing them to spec, they're not going to be very accessible after the head is in place. Might as well put the other ones at the same time then. And the chain guide pin. Now I'm just going to clean the surface from any oil residue. And gently slide the new head gasket in place. Now it's important to keep it clean, so you can see I'm trying to only touch the edges and not the faces of the gasket. Don't forget to fit the centering sleeves in place. And here's the cylinder head going back in its place. Pretty exciting. I'm using the zip tie to pull the chain sprocket through. And gently slide it in place, making sure the gasket is where it's supposed to be. Now I'm just adding some oil to the four washers. And now putting on the nuts. They go with the shoulder towards the cylinder head. Now tightening all four of them to the same level by hand. Now I'm just gently tightening each of them in stages till I get to 20 newton meters, And I do that in stages till I make sure the head is level. and putting the M10 bolt in place as well, and torquing that to spec. And also the small M6 bolts. Now it's time to finish with the studs. They need an extra two stages of 90 degrees each. So I've got my degree wheel, and I'm just going to carefully spin each nut 90 degrees. First one went pretty well. Do the same for all four. Now doing the second stage. And we're done. The head is all torqued up. I'm just going to double check this M10 bolt is torqued to spec and hasn't loosened at all. Now I'm just going to fit the cam press sprocket back in place. The arrows are supposed to be horizontal and there's a pin that locates it in the right place on the camshaft. Put the bolt and the washer in, but don't tighten it all the way. And now I can cut the zip tie off. Just double checking it's all engaged and in the right place. And now I can torque that to spec as well. Adding a new crush washer to the tensioner. Again I'll have to put the bottom piece first and then the top one. Space is very tight there without removing the telelever arm, so I'm just going to use a spanner as there's not enough room for a torque wrench. I can get a thin breaker bar and a socket in there for the final tightening. And now I can remove the crankshaft locking tool. Just checking if the engine spins nice and freely, which it does. I'm going to put it back atop that center. and checking the markings on the camshaft pulley are still horizontal. Now it's time to quickly adjust the valve clearance 
They're all pretty tight now, so I'm gonna start by loosening them off. And just setting the clearance correctly. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I've got a separate video on adjusting the valve clearance, and you can find it on my channel. Once I'm happy with the valve clearance, I'm also gonna check the end float, and it's always a good idea to check it on top of the rocker, not on the bottom side. It's all good in this case, so I don't need to adjust it. Now doing two complete revolutions and double checking everything. Now I've disconnected the injectors, bike is also in gear with the side stand down, and I'm just gonna use the starter to spin it over and see what it does. And it's all looking pretty good. We can see all this coming to the cylinder head, so I think we're all good here. Now it's time to put a new o-ring on this little cover and pop it back in place. Fit the rocker cover. Tighten everything to the correct torque. Spark plugs are going back in on both sides. Spark plug leads now, I'm just using a bit of silicone oil to help it find its place. And I can pop the plastic covers in place as well. And put the throttle body back, again some silicone oil to help everything slide in place. Plug the injector back in and tighten all the clamps. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna re-tighten the alternator belt, as this seems a bit loose. So the alternator is all loose now, I've got a torque wrench on the back of it, set to 8 Newton meters, and that applies the correct tension to the belt, and once that's good, I can torque the other three bolts to spec. And I think I've covered all the interesting bits for now, so I'm going to stop filming here. Off camera I'm going to put the plug back in the crankcase, cover, exhaust, crash bars, fuel tank, everything, put it all back together. And I'll see you when it's ready to be fired up. See you in a bit. So the bike fires straight up. It all sounds really good. I'm really happy with that. I've just let it warm up a bit and I'm going to check the throttle body balance. It's pretty close, just a bit off. Just doing a slight adjustment on the left side. And it's pretty close now, just trying to improve it a bit more. And I'm ready to take it out on a test ride. And it's lovely. I really enjoy riding an old GS, even though it's minus 4 degrees outside. Here I am arriving at Normandy Motorcycles for an MOT, which it passed. That's it, hope this video was helpful, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.